first question in Calgary, we were both sitting on stage, that big, huge, like, uh, it was a hockey stadium. And the first question was about that. You know, actually asked more delicately than you. But both he and I knew exactly what she, um, she was talking about. We almost simultaneously said, oh, it's a gay thing. <laughs> we tried to keep it quiet, but apparently we were too flaming for <laughs> I, I've missed this. I have to <laughs> check this out. It was C text. So be afraid, Tony. Be very afraid. Uh, right over here. Uh, the first time this is for this question is for Richard. The first time you uh, met Christopher Judge on the set of Stargate SG One, did you remember him from the episode Live and Learn from MacGyver? And he's the young football player that you know, threw to the floor, and you're like. Oh, I remember, ooh, he got bigger too. too. <laughs> you know, it kills Chris to hear me say this, but I don't remember him. <laughs> and he, I swear, you get in my face, and like, you didn't, really? Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. He was, uh, no, I didn't remember him from that, and, um, oh, what was the other part of that question? <laughs> no, it's, uh, first time I met Chris was at, uh, he, uh, he was auditioning, apparently. Apparently. I was in, uh, over at MGM, I was uh, one of the executive producers, got it, my deal. And so I was sitting there in the casting session, and uh, we'd been through, Michael came on, and he obviously was Daniel, and Amanda came out, and she was funny, and full of energy, so she got the deal. Um, Chris walks out, doesn't say a word, just standing there. You know what a gorgeous, massive human being he is, right? I just looked up at him and I said, why don't you start working out? Don't you care? It's just shoot. And he didn't say a word and he had to roll. <laughs> Maybe it's because he didn't say a word that he got to roll. Also, I have a question for Master Tony. Um, are we ever going to see the adventures of Telkin Braytech? I hope so. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. What's going on in the bag? Oh, shh, you see, you let the cat out of the bag here. <laughs> the, the adventures of Tilk and Master Braytech with Jack O'Neill. <laughs> <laughs> Appearing as. Appearing as. Great buddy cop movie. All right, right over here. All right, so Richard, I grew up in a very conservative, safe uh, Canadian family, and we weren't allowed to watch any TV until we got it. So uh, thank you for putting together a show that uh, got me into te television. Wait, now, what were the circumstances? Or was it just a strict family? or Just pretty strict, yeah. Everything on TV was bad, you know, that kind of thing. And then, you, you know, when Diver came on, and hey, that's cool. All he uses is a jackknife. There's Guns. We, we got toys, and my dad cut the guns off the cowboys and Indians. <laughs> so there's people standing and facing each other just with sawed off hands. <laughs> Stay with me. So I did this. <laughs> oh 
bones sticking out everywhere. I had my white jersey on, so that was shot. And the rest is, well, thank God that happened, actually, because I was so enthusiastic about hockey and becoming a professional that, in retrospect, that stopping me from being, from pursuing it allowed me to not embarrass myself any further as a hockey player. Because I, in retrospect, I never would have made it. Too slow. You had the hair. <laughs> you had the hair. hair. Oh, I created the hair. <laughs> look, at, look at Barry Melrose. He's still wearing that thing. All right, thanks. Thanks, man. He's doing a guy every time he's on the ESPN. Right over here. Okay, um, well, my question is for Richard. Um, your character has been known to be quite comical, so my question is, uh, were you the bigger prankster on set, or were other cast members the bigger prankster? I don't know. <laughs> I, it, the problem with that question is that I was never really keenly aware of how prankstery I was appearing to be. It was just net normal behavior for me. <laughs> Which is a sad commentary on my parental upbringing, <laughs> societal influences, education, and my general attitude, I guess. No, I, it's, seriously, I never, I was never a prankster. I mean, I, I didn't know how to set up, a, you know, a prank. And, uh, but it was all spontaneous kind of misbehavior. 